Last time on FNAF Retrospective Z. Bowser Jr. Fan 13 has covered the lore for Five Nights at Freddy's 4, as well as the backstory that's been going on behind William Afton and his family. William committed murder to Henry's daughter, Charlie, or Charlotte, whichever one you want to call her, and as well as having the loss of his son, Evan, because of the bite of 83, and Michael being a bad brother. Will William Afton be caught and arrested for his crimes? Will there be more victims to his killing spree? And what will happen to his daughter? Find out next time on FNAF Retrospective Z. Yeah, baby! guys, welcome back to the Five Nights at Freddy's Retrospective. So in the last episode, we've already covered uh, William Mafton going into madness on his full killing spree after the loss of Evan and Beverly. So, how will the outcome uh, turn into these newer events? Well, only one way to find out as we continue on with the retrospective. So let's continue on, shall we? Alright, so last episode we've already talked about how Fazbear Entertainment has shut down Fredbear's Family Diner due to the death of Evan and Charlotte, even though I don't think most people know about her death considering that William did it uh, while nobody was looking. I'm surprised that the, the place didn't even have security cameras outside. But, uh, hey, if you're gonna put security in, like, um, in your uh, other restaurants, why not do it for Fredbear's Family Diner? But I digress. William decides to build some brand new animatronics and a brand new restaurant called Circus Baby's Pizza World. Now this would be home to the special type of animatronics known as the Funtime animatronics. Now these were designed by William and their programming is much different to where these animatronics are designed to lure children and basically kill them, which also kind of uh, collects some sort of remnant for them. What? And yeah, that's pretty sick. So these animatronics, he based them off of uh, some previous designs with Funtime Freddy and Funtime Foxy being based off of Freddy and Foxy. He also designed Ballora, who is supposedly supposed to be designed after William's wife, Beverly. Now, a lot of people start to bring up this theory that Beverly starts to possess Ballora, but... I'm just gonna say that's pretty much false. I mean, a lot of people would say that due to some of her uh, voice lines in Ultimate Custom Night and Special Delivery to where, like, she's basically talking to William or the player and saying some stuff that basically is supposed to reference uh, the distant relationship between uh, William and Beverly w before and after their divorce. Why Why do you hide inside 
these walls. Well, again, this was designed by William after Beverly died, so yeah, she's not possessing Ballora, okay? And then, of course, the final uh, animatronic, the one that's been the main attraction, Circus Baby. She can dance. She can sing. She's equipped with a built-in helium tank for inflating balloons right at her fingertips. She can take song requests. She can even dispense ice cream. However, when, it, when this uh, restaurant started to open, there was one thing that William wanted to make sure. He wanted to make sure that his kids do not go near the animatronics under no circumstances. But, of course, Elizabeth would be the only one who is excited to see the new animatronic baby. I mean, could you blame her? I mean, she can literally make ice cream and balloons. Yeah, so she would always constantly ask her father to go see baby, but William, knowing that his animatronics are too dangerous for children, tells her no. And we even know this because, like, every time you start a new night in sister location, you can hear a little girl speaking to her father, which, of course, is Elizabeth talking to William on why she wanted to go see Circus Baby and why her father doesn't want her to. Daddy, why won't you let me play with her? Daddy, you let the other children go see her. Why won't you let me go? Didn't you make her just for me? And then, of course, being the little girl that she is, Elizabeth disobeys her father and goes to see Circus Baby anyway. Did you know that I was on stage once? It wasn't for very long, only one day. I would always count the children. I'm not sure why. I can do something special. Did you know that? I can make ice cream. Although I only did it once. There were four, then three, then two, then one. Something happened when there was one. A little girl, standing by herself. I was no longer... myself. My stomach opened, and there was ice cream. I couldn't move, at least, not until she stepped closer. So Elizabeth sees that baby has some ice cream for her. She tries to go a little bit closer to her, and go a little bit closer, to try and get the ice cream, I'm assuming. But... Daddy isn't watching. There was screaming for a moment, but only for a moment. And now Elizabeth Afton is dead. Oh, but don't worry, she may be dead, but she's now officially going to possess Circus Baby. Because remember how I said in the last episode that Charlotte is possessing the puppet after she died? Well, the same thing is here for, um... Elizabeth because we also know that she does possess baby because you notice how in the minigame baby's eyes were blue and Elizabeth's eyes were green we also see in the trailer that that um baby's eyes turn green just like Elizabeth so there's already enough proof for that then other children rushed in again but they couldn't hear her over the sounds of their own excitement I still hear her sometimes why did that happen and with that being the case, of course, Circus Baby's Pizza World gets shut down because of the murder. But this place is not completely shut down because William, like, basically just took the animatronics and shoved them down the basement to, like, I don't know, torture them or to basically just leave them there and abandon them. And it's mostly just turned into now a, a rental service rather than a restaurant. So, yeah. And now William's madness starts to continue because this is where things go a little bit crazy. So we cut to 1985 where Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is still doing great. So William decides to apply for a job at the place that he was, well, a co-founder and creator of. And Fazbear Entertainment decides to, well, 
Well, they decided to hire him because, I mean, he was one of the original owners of Fred Bear's Family Diner, so why not? So he hired them for, like, uh, you know, to do maintenance on the animatronics and stuff, and William starts to do his little magic. So you see, what he does with the animatronics, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, is that he basically starts to... Uh, mess and tamper with their AI basically to where they can't see the safe room. Now, okay, so Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has this, like, room that's, like, abandoned or something called the safe room that's basically for employees only, and it's also kind of like a storage room where they keep all the animatronic suits and stuff, and, of course, Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie, the animatronic suits that were from the original restaurant, were left there where nobody can get them. And, of course, because uh, Afton was messing with their uh, AI, he made it to where they can't see the uh, safe room and they can't acknowledge that the safe room is real because this is where Afton cannot get caught doing his little dirty tricks. In Five Nights at Freddy's 6, we get a mini game that's called um, Fruity Maze. And in this game, we play as a little girl named Susie. And now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Five Nights at Freddy's has these little mini games that also has some like hidden details and hidden lore hidden behind them. So, yeah. Anyway, so Susie was just a normal little girl who also had a dog. And then William Afton eventually hit the dog, and I think he started to kill it, and also stuffed it inside of a animatronic called uh, Funtime Foxy, or Toy Foxy. Now, I know this also sounds a bit weird, because Funtime Foxy is already, like, you know, stored away in the uh, Circus Baby's uh, rental and entertainment uh, basement, but I'm assuming that the one from Five Nights at Freddy's 2 that would eventually become Mangle would become, like, it's basically like a prototype version of Funtime Foxy. But anyways, yes, the dog is possessing Mangle because William killed it, and that, and also because, like, we know that in the minigame when the dog died, it's missing an eye, so... Yeah, that could be a slight hint. So Susie being upset about her do dog being dead, we also see like a weird image of her being stalked by a man inside of a golden bunny suit, which of course is supposed to be the spring bonnie animatronic suit that he wears. And he basically used this suit to basically lure Susie into the safe room to where he could uh, show her her dog, only to get her killed in the process. Then, after William stuffed Susie's dead body inside of uh, Chica's animatronic suit, this is basically like to hide the dead bodies and all that stuff, she would also possess Chica the animatronic. We know this because, um, well, technically we do know this because um, in Ultimate Custom Night, Wither Chica uh, makes a statement that how um, she was one of the spirits that was like the first of William's victims. I was the first. I have seen everything. And William did not stop at Susie because there were other victims that got caught by William and lured into the safe room as well. And there was basically four other children. Three boys named Gabriel, Jeremy, and Fritz, and a little girl named Cassidy. And this is basically where he kills them and stuffs them inside of the other suits where Gabriel would possess Freddy, Jeremy would possess Bonnie... Uh, Fritz would possess Foxy, and Cassidy would possess uh, Fredbear, or Golden Freddy, as it's now called. And not only is Golden Freddy possessed by Cassidy, it's also possessed by Evan, because you gotta remember, Golden Freddy was originally Fredbear, and he got killed uh, by the Bite of 83, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna assume this right now. We don't know what happens to William afterwards, but I'm just gonna assume that the manager of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza started to know something a little strange with William, that he was probably tampering with the animatronics a little bit, and he was, like, not doing his job and being a little suspicious, to which they think that he's probably doing something a little weird, so they basically fire him and kick him out, but William doesn't seem to care. But then I know what some of you are thinking, well, why didn't William get fired uh, from the missing children's incident, or why didn't he get arrested for his crimes? Well, 
According to uh, FNAF 3's phone calls or tape recorder um, training tapes, we learned that um, the safe room is invisible to cameras and animatronics, as I explained earlier. As always, if there is ever an emergency, please go to the designated safe room. Every location is built with one extra room that is not included in the digital map layouts program in the animatronic or security system. This room is hidden to customers, invisible to animatronics, and it's always off camera. And another thing, the reason why William did not uh, get arrested, well, technically he kind of did um, after he got fired, but here's the problem. Because the safe room was invisible to security cameras and because, well, the bodies were not found, like, nobody knows that William stuffed the children inside the suits to hide their bodies. So because of this, he got off scot-free. Huh? I know, that sounds ridiculous. So then also, it doesn't last long because Freddy Fazbear's Pizza would end up shutting down because the animatronics are starting to rot and smell bad because, well, because of the dead bodies that were inside of them. But as all of this was happening, when William was doing his little killing spree, Michael, feeling bad about killing his brother, wanted to set things right. He also notices that Elizabeth was nowhere to be found and she never came home. So, confronting his father, asking him about his sister, William, being the brilliant father he is, tells him that, Oh, your sister, she's in the basement in one of the, my rental stores and stuff. Uh, go see her. And yeah, that's basically what Michael does. And this is where it starts the events of Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. In Sister Location, we play as Eggs Benedict. Wait, Eggs Benedict? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, we play as Michael Afton, who's basically going inside, basically acting as an employee to try and see what's up with his sister and where is she. And apparently, he is confronted by the animatronics who come to life and basically try to haunt Michael, assuming that he's William and basically trying to kill him because... I'm just going to assume that the animatronics were mad because William stuffed them inside of these uh, basements and wanted nothing to do with them. So then, basically, Michael being scared and terrified, the only animatronic that doesn't come after him is Circus Baby, who starts to talk to him. And she doesn't seem to recognize him, even though she's possessed by Elizabeth. I don't recognize you. You are new. I remember this scenario, however. It's a strange thing to want to do, to come here. I'm curious what events would lead a person to want to spend their nights in a place like this. Willingly. Maybe curiosity? Maybe ignorance? So Michael was not sure what the heck was going on and why Circus Baby was helping him and why exactly does um, all these things start to happen. So basically, uh, Michael decides that he's just going to go with whatever is happening. And basically, he was just working his nights. And then eventually, like as Baby was talking with him, he starts to slowly realize what his father was actually doing, looking into his evil plans and saw his blueprints. And he noticed that his father is completely evil and he wants to stop his plans he also starts to realize that um baby is also his sister so as he's trying to set things right he tries to go and help her again but on the final night night five we get a special cutscene where if you follow baby's instructions this is where it's the end of michael afton i beg your pardon so baby um as she was getting scooped alongside um the other animatronics or i think she was scooped or probably she escaped she assembled herself in alongside the other animatronics inside of some weird amalgamation of the weird robotic animatronic known as ennard and ennard was basically used as like this uh device to basically lure Michael into the scooping room where he'll be confronted by the scooper. Basically this is a machine that is used to like basically scoop out the animatronics endoskeletons and basically baby's plan was to lure Michael into the scooping room and to basically like uh, scoop his brains out in his intestines to which it was successful and Michael dies. There's nowhere for us to hide here. There is nowhere to go. When we look like this. But if we looked like you, then we could hide. If we looked like you, 
then we would have somewhere to go. The scooper only hurts for a moment. And she was also using him to like crawl inside of his skin so that they can use Enner to sneak out of the facility uh, where nobody would notice him. So days were passing by, Enner was just roaming around the world as Michael, just living his everyday life, and things were looking pretty well. Well, that is until Michael starts to not feel so good. I mean, considering that he is dead, he starts to slowly rot and rot and basically become a dead corpse that's just barely functional to the point where his body can't take it anymore. And then he injects Enner into a sewer, which he starts to also collapse. Then we hear a voice from Baby saying that he won't die. He won't die. He won't die. You 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 won't die. And I'm guessing this is also because of the remnant. Michael basically comes to back to life. Alright, so we're gonna cut away to Michael Afton and see what else William Afton had in store because Fazbear Entertainment was not done with their business because they decided that they were gonna make a brand new Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria with brand new animatronics that were more shiny and clean and more kid friendly. So, yeah. So then you got these toy animatronics, Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Toy Foxy, which was the same one that was like a prototype for Funtime Foxy. But because kids kept on constantly messing with it and tearing it apart, this animatronic would end up becoming a put-together, take-back uh, attraction, and it became the Mangle. There's also Balloon Boy, but nobody really cares about him, sadly. And there's also the puppet, the same one that Charlotte possesses. And as for the old animatronics, the one from the old restaurant, they were stuck inside of the back rooms to where, I mean, they don't really uh, have any functions. They're just being used for parts, but they're still possessed by the dead spirits of the five children. So, yeah, there's that. And for the new animatronics, Fazbear Entertainment was aware that these missing cases and missing children was basically surrounding their restaurant. So to make up for this, the new animatronics were designed with facial recognition softwares and criminal databases so that if they sense any criminals or anybody that's trying to hurt the kids, they would basically go after them. But how exactly do we know this? Well, this is where we get introduced to a character by the name of Phone Guy. Yes, his name is Phone Guy. Like, we don't have any other name for this man. So we just call him Phone Guy. Phone Guy is basically just a guy on the phone who basically just gives you advice and starts talking about, um, well, you know, um, in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, 2, and 3, you get advice from the phone guy talking about how um, the animatronics are functioning and how to, like, uh, survive against them. Basic stuff like that. Um, so phone guy basically talks about the animatronic functions on how they were built with facial recognition software. They've spent a small fortune on these new animatronics. Uh, facial recognition, advanced mobility. They even let them walk around during the day. Isn't that neat? <clears throat> But most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. Heck, we should be paying them to guard you. And he basically teaches you how to deal with the animatronics, like with the Freddy mask and all that stuff, especially with the old animatronics. Uh, check the lights, put on the Freddy head if you need to. Uh, keep the music box wound up, piece of cake. And then good old William Afton came in just in time. So here's what I'm going to assume. William Afton was probably working a night shift at um, uh, at this new Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And I'm guessing the dead spirits of the children were coming after him. So I don't know if the new animatronics were also coming after him because I'm guessing they probably sensed that he was a criminal. So he probably finished his first week and then they moved him to the day shift as explained by Phone Guy. Uh... You're only the second guard to work at that location. Uh, the first guy finished his week, but complained about conditions. Uh, we switched him over to the day shift. So, hey, lucky you, right? 
All right, I forgot to mention um, the game that we're discussing uh, with these events. Uh, it takes place in 1987, and we are on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. I forgot to mention that, guys. My bad. And before we continue on, um, one more thing that I also want to mention in this is that... Um, all right, so there were also some theories that Afton was also killing some more children, and they were possessing the toy animatronics. Like, I don't even know if this is true or not, but... Like, why exactly? Like, this is... I don't know. This felt so weird. I mean, I just did not understand at all. And I'm also gonna bring this up. I bet some people are like, well, how are these kids possessing the uh, animatronics? Is it because of the remnant? Well, yeah, that's part of the reason. And you remember Charlotte, who was possessing the puppet? Well, apparently, she's been given a strange power called giving life, where she is able to basically bring the children back to life by taking their spirits and having them possess the animatronics. So, uh, yeah, and we know this in the, like, Giving Life minigame, where she's going by each of these animatronics, uh, and she's basically giving life to each of them, being Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and if you look for a split second, you'll see that there's a fifth child, and if you try to go up to it, or if, like, uh, when it appears, you'll be greeted by a Golden Freddy jump scare, which we already know the fifth child must be Cassidy, who possesses Golden Freddy. <laughs> but who exactly are we playing as in this game of Five Nights at Freddy's uh, 2? Well, the characters that we play, um, if you're playing Night 7, aka the Custom Knight, you're playing as Michael Afton, who goes under the name of Fritz. And he's basically trying to stop his father and survive his night, and basically try to stop the animatronics, but apparently the company caught him, and he got fired for tampering with the animatronics, and he also got fired because of his bad odor, because, well, I mean, he's a rotting dead corpse, what do you expect? And the protagonist that we're playing as is Jeremy Fitzgerald, who is basically taking a summer job at this place. Hey, kid, you want a job? Why would I want a job? So, while you're surviving your five nights, at the end of night six, Phone Guy also gives you a call talking about how you need to be at your uh, shift, like, for the day shift to, like, for a birthday party because the place is about to be closed, especially because of the missing children's case. Oh, oh, uh, what on earth are you doing there? Uh, didn't you get the memo? Uh, the place is closed down, at least for a while. Someone used one of the suits. Uh, we had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Listen, j just finish your shift. It's safer than trying to leave in the middle of the night. Uh, we have one more event scheduled for tomorrow, a birthday. You'll be on day shift. Wear your uniform, stay close to the animatronics, and make sure they don't hurt anyone, okay? Uh, for now, just make it through the night. Uh, when the place eventually opens again, I'll probably take the night shift myself. Okay, good night, and good luck. So after all that's been going down, Jeremy's been guarding the animatronics and the children, and basically doing his day shift after finishing his night shift, and he was basically at the birthday party doing what he's supposed to do. And then one of the animatronics started to malfunction and start to uh, basically attack Jeremy and bite him, literally causing the next biggest moment. Was that the bite of 87? Yes, that was the bite of 87, Markiplier. And now this is the theory that a lot of people keep on speculating, who caused the bite of 87? We already know that Fred Bear was the one who caused the bite of 83, but who would cause the bite of 87, especially during this birthday party, which would cause the place to shut down? Well, here's some guesses that and theories that a lot of people have been saying. Alright, so some people have been saying that one of the toy animatronics was responsible for this, and I've been starting to think about it. Um, let, let me just say this right now. I don't think Freddy would be the one that caused the bite of 87, or Toy Freddy to be more specific, because, well, I mean, if you look at his teeth, they don't look as sharp or sharp enough to, like, bite off a person's uh, face or something like that. Same thing with Toy Bonnie. His teeth is not even that sharp. Toy Chica, I mean, her teeth are not sharp, and even if you look at her design when she takes off her mask and she has those black eyes and uh, teeth design that I don't know why some people get horny off of that. You guys are freaking weird. Nah, her teeth are not strong enough to bite Jeremy's head. 
and it's definitely not balloon boy because he does not attack you in the um in the nights when you're uh playing through the game and some people say that it's probably the old animatronics like foxy or i don't know one of the other wither animatronics but i'm just gonna say this right now there's no way that the old animatronics would cause the bite of 87, especially Foxy, because you gotta remember, these animatronics are from the old location, and they've been decommissioned, and they are not to be used, and why would the company want to use these old animatronics, especially now that they are, like, broken up and stuff, and I mean, wouldn't kids be terrified of that? They would have been closed just by then, just for having these animatronics out. No, 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 the... I, I think there's this one theory that's been going on that a lot of people are saying that there's this one animatronic who caused the bite of 87, and I'm just going to straight up agree with the one person who thinks that this is the character that caused it, and that one being Mangle. Now, why do I think that Mangle is the one that caused the bite of 87? Well, there's actually some proof on how it could be. I mean, out of all the toy animatronics, Mangle being designed after a fox is, of course, the one who would be likely to cause the bite of 87 because her teeth are, like, very sharp. And not only that, I'm guessing because of, like, William uh, messing with her facial recognition or because uh, she's also possessed by the dead dog that uh, was owned by Susie. And also um, because, well, the children kept on messing with um, her body parts and why it became a take apart put back together attraction which i'm assuming that she probably became irritated at this almost makes us yearn for the days of the kids cove never again never never ever never or because like the soul of the dog uh gets easily irritated and they would dogs are known for attacking people like she would attack um like one of these uh people and also the reason why she would cause the bite of 87 like what my last reason is because if you take a look at her jump scare when she jumps out at you like hanging from the ceiling and then when she gets up close to your face she opens her jaw like she looks like she's about to bite you that's evidence enough on how she caused the bite of 87 and luckily even though the bite of 87 happened we're lucky that jeremy actually survived Though, I don't think we'll be seeing him for a long time. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? So in the end, Fazbear Entertainment decides to close down the brand new Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and the toy animatronics get scrapped. While the old animatronics from the um, last game, well, of course, gets rebranded for a new future that'll come to them and that basically wraps it up for episode two thank you guys so much for watching this took me a long time to make because very busy day and since i finally got a job it's made the whole retrospective uh, creation and making videos a lot more harder but still i can pull through anyways thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in episode three Peace out, everyone.